Hey, Rob fans, Rob's reason number three, not to trust John Vendetta or his board, demand an independent financial forensic audit. It's the only way that we're going to find out what really happened. Okay, reason number three, not to trust John Vendetta or his board, Deputy Town Attorney Donna B. Swanson. Yes, I have a special place in my heart for Donna, and I'll explain why. While I was employed as a police officer, during the course of my duties, I had to effect arrests. There were many instances when I had to appear with, at the district attorney's office to process these arrests. Uh, grand jury hearings, Huntley hearings, MAP hearings, trial, plenty of contact with the DA. Right, my point is that Donna Swanson is a prosecutor for the Town of Oyster Bay. She prosecuted my boat case. She's the equivalent of the DA to the town. Okay, Now, I could tell you, and anyone else in law enforcement will tell you, that if you're a police officer and you're, you're speaking with a district attorney and you're discussing uh, anything, and you make admissions that you committed some sort of crime, you're going to get locked up. Okay, that's the district attorney's job. So my point is that for me to spend years in court writing motions and arguing that, you know, I didn't think the town code applied to me, my boat in my yard. Well, while Donna Swanson was prosecuting me for this, she was committing the same crimes. I mean, it's a fact. She had three boats in her yard. Even after she was caught, she moved them back in. I caught her on three different occasions. So, you know, personally, I don't think Donna should be not even an attorney. I don't think she should be employed by the town. She disgusts me, and that's why. I'm sorry if you don't understand. All right, so what I'd like to move into, um, besides her behavior in the, uh, the boat fiasco, recently Mr. Vendetta and the town board have accused me, actually, you know, in a public forum in a meeting, of knowingly making false complaints about Donna. I've been called a liar, specifically in regards to a complaint I made on her using her notary stamp to stamp her own building permit documents which the fact of the matter is that the, the documents show that they were expeditiously approved within days, almost immediately. Okay? So I just want to go through this complaint because although it was answered and it was deemed unfounded and I was going to let it go, I decided to reopen it, and I'll explain why. So just going into the documents, I'll try to keep this in focus. It's a pain in the neck because I'm holding a phone. All right, I made a complaint to the New York State Licensing Division on Donna Swanson. All right, it's a notary complaint. I allege that Donna Swanson is employed by the Town of Oyster Bay as a deputy town attorney assigned to the Building and Code Enforcement Bureaus of the Town of Oyster Bay. She's respons responsible for enforcing town codes. Donna Swanson used his position as a town attorney and notary to get preferential treatment and to submit and have building documents processed expeditiously by notarizing her own signature and notarizing the signatures of others on official town documents that she definitely has an interest in. I have reviewed the Town of Voice Debate building files associated with 59 South Baldwin Place, Massapequa, New York, 1758, via the New York State FOIL law. It appears that even though thousands of others had to wait months for building permits after Super Sun Sandy, Donna Swanson was able to use her position as an attorney for the town and her office as a notary to secure preferential treatment for herself. Okay, so I accused her of, a notar of notarizing her own documents, okay, and I accused her of, of notarizing her own signature, all right? Those are the allegations I made. And at the time I made the allegation, these are the documents that I forwarded into the licenses division along with those allegations, all right? I was under the impression at this time that Donna had notarized her own signature here. I was incorrect. It's a false allegation, okay? I admit it. It was a mistake. It wasn't done purposely. Doesn't let her off the hook, though. All right. If we look at the rest of the documents, Donna has notarized other signatures on her documents. Okay, John and Donna Swanson, 59 Baldwin Place. She did it on a num number of times. Donna Swanson, 59 Baldwin Place. Everything approved by Fred Polito. Okay. And, and let's just, just so that we can be sure about the expeditious part, okay, 
she's notarizing a signature here on, on October 13th. Okay, and Ippolito is approving. Let me get it in focus. October 16th. <laughs> it won't focus. There it is. October 16th, all right? That seems like it's expeditiously to May. So in response to this complaint, I got a reply, all right, that this is from the New York State Department of State. It's to Robert Kipp. <laughs> and what it says is, this is from Rosalind Young, the District Manager, Division of Licensing Services. All right, what it reads is, we have completed our investigation of the complaint you filed against Notary Public Donna Swanson. Section 130 of the executive law gives this agency the authority to discipline notary publics who engage in misconduct. However, our investigation did not uncover any such acts. There was no evidence that Ms. Swanson used her position as a notary public to receive preferential treatment. Well, I guess she didn't, you know, review the town building files, but I could see from her point of view no evidence of that. In addition, Ms. Swanson did not notarize her own signature. I agree with that also. The document in question with the signature was notarized by a different notary. Public, excuse me. Based on these findings, we are closing our file at this time. But what's interesting is Miss Young ignored the fact that Donna Swanson notarized her own documents. And, you know, at the time, I just let it go. I wasn't going to, you know, appeal it and make a big deal out of it. But now I am. And I'll tell you why. Specifically because... John Vendetta was calling me a liar, saying that I'm purposely making false complaints. But let me show you the facts. This is the notary public law, New York State notary public law from February 2016. Okay. Department of State, Division of Licensing. There's the website. Okay. You can go on here. You go to page seven. All right. Executive law, page seven. And it tells you notary public disqualifications. All right. See if I get in. Though a person may be eligible to hold the office of a notary, the person may be disqualified to act in certain cases by reason of having an interest in the case. To state the rule broadly, if the notary is a party to or directly and pecuniarily interested in the transaction, the person is not capable of acting in that case. For example, a notary who is a grantee or a mortgagee in a convenience or a mortgage is disqualified to take the acknowledgement of the grantor or mortgagor. Likewise, a notary who is a trustee in a deed of trust, and of course a notary who is the grantor, could not, not take his own acknowledgement. A notary beneficiary, beneficially interested in the convenience by way of being secured thereby is not competent to take the acknowledgement of the interest, inter, instrument. Excuse me. In New York, the courts have held an acknowledgement taken by a person financially or beneficially interested in a party or convenience or instrument of which it is a part to be a new a, a nullity. And that the acknowledgement of an assessment of a mortgage before one of the assignees is a nullity. And that acknowledgement by one of the incorporators or other incorporators who signed a certificate was of no legal effect. So, according to the New York State law, Donna Swanson's building permits should be nullified. Well, what I decided to do is I wrote an appeal to this case. Okay. May 3rd, I'll send it certified mail. And what, what I'm saying is thank you for your reply to my complaint dated November 30th. Although I disagree with your findings, I was or originally willing to accept them and agree the case be closed. The subject of my complaint, Donna B. Swanson, is employed as a deputy town attorney in the town of Oyster Bay. Recently, officials in Oyster Bay, including Supervisor John Vendetto, have accused me in public forum at town hall meetings of knowingly making false allegations against Donna Swanson in this incident. I have publicly been called a liar in regards to this complaint. Because of this, I am, re I am requesting you reopen my complaint number 214-1718 for the following reasons. A notary public cannot legally notarize his or her own document. Most states specifically ban notaries from notarizing their own signatures and documents for good reason. It creates a direct conflict of interest. Because the fundamental purpose of notarization is to prevent fraud by adding another layer of the security to the document. Notaries typically perform a few different steps when notarizing a document. 
They verify the signer's identity, watch as the signer signs the document, and lastly, the notary places his or her own official seal on the document. The final seal placed on the document verifies that the notary checked the signer's identity and watched as he or she signed the document. Although not foil proof, these simple steps significantly help to prevent fraud. If a notary were to notarize his or her own document, it would essentially negate the purpose of having a document notarized. The notary could notarize his or her own document without going through the normal steps of identification verification. This is why most states explicitly ban this activity. Well, it's banned in New York. So, so I brought the attention of the notary law back to Ms. Young's attention, and I'll reopen the case. I'd like to ask everyone to just watch the uh, couple of videos that I put up, linked to this now, and Donna B. Swanson, Deputy Town Attorney, business as usual in the town of Oyster Bay, the land of double standard. Another reason not to trust John Vendetto as far as you could throw him. January 27th, 2014, uh, prior, to, prior to me making the complaints with you, I filed a complaint. Uh, this was my first complaint on Donna Swanson. I did the um, request for investigation form, and I sent it into the, uh, to the Code Enforcement Division. I also sent in a number of photographs of folks on Donna Swanson's property. And shortly after doing that investigation, I did a FOIL request. And this was uh, back in... Uh, 
This was back in April 26 of 2014. And I requested to review and inspect all the records, included but not limited to, any notice of violations and summons produced by the Town of Oyster Bay in relation to the Town's request for investigation complaint form. I personally submitted through the Office of the Town Supervisor with copies to the Commissioner of Planning and Development and the Town Attorney on January 27, 2014. Copy and next for your convenience. Yeah, now, hold on, let me finish. Hold on, one second. You said April 26, 2014? 2014. That's a Saturday. I, it's, I mailed it. Well, it was written on a Saturday. Thanks, thanks and for you. filed it on a Saturday. Thanks for the April 26. Okay, so now I got a response from that. And uh, you were going to provide me the response. And what I got back was I'm asking for the records, any records, closed records of any investigation or inspection that might have been produced by my complaint on Ms. Swanson's property. Here's the, freedom, here's the Freedom of Information and Response. This letter is a response to your request for your information pursuant to the Freedom of Information Law sent to this office for response. For any and all information, for any notice of violations and summonses produced by the Town of Oyster Bay, 59, Street, uh, 59 South Baldwin Place Road, there are no results of our search. There is, excuse me, the results of our search reveal there are no such records. Now, I know from personal experience that when a code enforcement agent uh, responds to a property to do an investigation, they fill out one of these code compliance in inspector's reports. Okay, I have a number of them in my case. And obviously, if I would have filled out the request for investigation and submit and sent the photographs in, they should be in the file too. Well, how would it be that I, I made this complaint almost a year prior to making my complaint to you, and there's no record of it? Does this mean that my, I sent my complaint on Ms. Swanson and it just got disregarded? Dis 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 when, you, when you make a statement that you found you, that an investigation was done, no wrongdoing was found, and then you turn around today and say, well, we didn't really investigate it. Hey, I, I, didn't, I, you know, I didn't hold on. Back, back in the. Whoa, she didn't go again. I didn't turn around and say something different. He did an investigation. He prepared a report to the district attorney's office. I reviewed the report. I did not see any wrongdoing on the part of the town. I said that then, and I'm saying it again now. The question I have about this formal request is, I submitted a complaint back in January of 2014 on a made an allegation that Donna Swanson was parking her bullets on one page service of a property. And um, shortly afterwards, on April 26, 2014, I made a Freedom of Information request and I asked, it for, I asked for any documents. I realized they'd be closed documents, uh, or any documents from the closed investigation, I should say, that were generated by my complaint and, my, and, and any subsequent investigation that might have been done. I know that there was a press release that um, Martha Kane, I think her name is, stated that I actually have a release with me here that when somebody went to Miss Swanson's house, there were no boats there. But what I'm curious about is when I did the FOIL request, they got a reply back that, that there were no documents that were produced in relation to my complaint. So I, I just know from my own personal experience yeah. that every time a code inspector goes on an investigation, they fill out a code compliance inspector's report. I mean, obviously, the photographs and the, and the complaint that I sent in should be you know, recorded and FOIL material. So my question was, why did I get a response back that there are no documents, no such documents? Okay. The FOIL request was received in April and it was acknowledged, timely acknowledged, and I think it was responded to in, in June in 2004. So about nine months ago, you received a response that there was no record of any violations in the Department of Planning and Development at that address. That was the response to the FOIL. Right, there was so no there records, were no, right? Me? There were no records, right? There were no violations in the department uh, of that address. The letter is in response to your request for information pursuant to Freedom of Information Law sent to this office for any and all information for any notice of violations and summons produced by the Town of Voice Bay 59th Street, Baldwin Place. The, res the results of our search view. I'm sorry, Tom. Let me just step back a second. Because, Tom, I understand what you're saying. But do me a favor and just go back to the original foil of April 26, 2014. And, and what you'll realize is the town's response from June 4th is not a response to everything that I requested back in April. If you, re if you read it, it says, I request to review and inspect 
uh, up to review and inspect all records included but not limited to any notice of violations and summons produced by the Town of Voice of Bay in relation to the Town's request for investigation complaint form and purposely submitted through the office of the Town and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm asking to see all records including but not limited to any notice of violations and summonses. So if you're prepared to tell me that this response is that there were simply no violations of summonses issued, that, I mean, I can understand that that's great, but that's not any, that's not including but not limited to any other records. I mean, I know for a fact that it should be other records. That's what I was looking for. Maybe, maybe. Well, there, go ahead. I guess you're saying that you know for a fact there will be records, but that's not the case. Um, and in conducting uh, a response to your <coughs> claims against the employees of the town, um, I had occasion to speak to the department and ask, with respect to this, um, what happened. They said that there was, they took a look at the property and they did not see the boats at the time. So, there was no so, so Tom, tell me, why didn't they fill out this code compliance inspector's report? Well, the fact that I, I can't is that question. Well, I he say, uh, wait, 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 we're really drifting here. See, this is what happens all the time. He had a response to a FOIA request. He told me the basis upon which the response was given. And that's it. That, that's the answer. <clears throat> if, if you have any other problems with it, well, I, I don't know what to say. He didn't you really know. tell me the basis. I mean, I'm asking for all the records that were included in my complaint on the specific said, property. Yes, there are there are you just got done telling you that. Okay, okay. So all I, all I said out of curiosity is, from my personal experience, I know that when a code enforcement agent goes it goes on a, a call, let's call it, I don't know, that he's supposed to fill this out. So there's a possibility. But let, let me finish what I'm saying. No, so, no, 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 let me finish what I'm saying. Because you know, let me finish what I'm saying. saying. From your personal experience, people never dismiss charges. That's your. I, I that's not what I said either, John. That's not my personal experience. John, that's you not what from, I said. You said from your personal experience, A, B, C, and D. Well, unfortunately, your personal experience doesn't define this. I know. He said he. You asked. He answered the question. There are no documents. Let's move on. <laughs> okay. So. I made a, I'm sorry, but I can't just move on, okay, I, because I'm entitled to an answer, I'm a little confused. I, what, I just want to make sure that I have everything straight in my head. I made a, I made a complaint, it was investigated, there, were no, there was no violations done, but apparently, or, or possibly the code enforcement investigators that, that for, instance, for instance, I asked for any uh, documents that were created in relation to this complaint. Do you know who the code enforcement inspectors were that responded to this? No, I do not. Because there were no documents, right? There are no records. Of right. So that's my point. This is this, see. This is the reason I'm bringing this bringing this to your attention. I didn't send this complaint through 15 offices to the town of Oyster Bay. I sent this complaint directly in to the to the to the uh, planning and development. So here's my question: How can I make a complaint and there be no record of it anywhere? Okay. That's that's the question, John. So there's no answer how I can make a complaint and there be no record? He's already answered the question.